Hello everyone. How's it going? We're excited for this live session today. Hello, hello, hello folks. Just waiting a couple of seconds to gather up some viewers. How's it going? Stephanie, Nadine, Hassan, Jessica. Hello, Jessica from Katay. All good? Hello, hello, everyone. Just logging in my guest speaker for the session. Hi, Rudy. Hey, how are you? How's it going, man? Uh, All good? Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to fix my... All right. Perfect. Looks good. Sure. Okay, so let's kick things off. Guys, everyone, welcome to our 10th Instagram live session under the Breaking E-Commerce Academy. We're excited to have gone this far with you all. The Breaking E-Commerce Academy, everyone has been aiming to educate merchants on the e-commerce best practices to successfully sell and grow online. We've been building momentum with um, all of our viewers over the past 10 weeks, and this is week number 10, and we thought of who could we feature, how can we take this to, to the next level, and this is why we decided to talk about the secrets to e-commerce success with you, Rudy Bekerjian, the founder and CEO of e yes. um, Thank you so much, Rudy, for joining us in this session. Um, can you please go ahead and introduce yourself to our viewers? Yeah, uh, I like the tone, the energy about e-commerce. I want to take it to the next level. Uh, I love talking about e-commerce. So for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Rudy Bekarajian. I'm founder and CEO of e-coms. Uh, so e-commerce is my passion. I've been doing this uh, since almost 20 years now. Uh, I started in North America, where I've been living there for almost all my life. Uh, uh, E-commerce started, uh, I would say, 2007. I started to jumping, uh, deep diving into e-commerce. And over the years, I helped uh, hundreds of merchants directly and indirectly to basically grow their online business online and generate, uh, we're talking like dozens and dozens of millions of dollars in revenues. Sounds cool. Sounds cool. Thank you really for joining us. Um, before we kick off the session today, I'm going to uh, just put in a couple of housekeeping rules. Um, I'm going to be taking notes, everyone. So um, if you need to, uh, if you need a recap, um, just DM us after the session and I will send you um, a quick recap for the notes. It's great, Rudy. And uh, all of our sessions are posted on IGTV. So this session will also be posted there. And you can drop us questions throughout the session um, in, the, in the comment section. And I will go through them at the end with Rudy and we will answer all of your questions around e-commerce. So great. Um, this is a, th these are my housekeeping points. Let's jump to the topic. So the title for today is um, the secret to e-commerce success. Okay, really, and, and everyone, this is a very casual conversation. So if you have any you know questions or concerns, drop them in the comments, and we'll have them um, on our minds during the talk. So, Rudy, for e-commerce, mm -hmm. what is um, an advice? Or how should someone start off with his journey in, for an online business in e-commerce? How would you give him a piece of advice? Well, I like simple things. So to keep it simple, uh, the best, uh, let's say I want to summarize it in one sentence, I would say, get started, right? It's as simple as that. The right time is always now. It's time to sell online and you should not wait a minute. Now, the biggest mistake people do is they think, you know, they think about e-commerce as, as if it's something really big because it's a virtual world, right? So virtual world, it's very abstract. You know, people are not used to it. So they think it's something big, it's something costly. But that was part of the past. Today, with platforms such as e coms we make the journey very, very simple. All right? So... Just to give you a summary, for instance, a lot of customers that I talk to that are thinking about moving online, they'll think a lot about the little details. You know, for example, can we move this icon a bit lower? Can we do this, this? Can, you know, like so many little things 
that don't matter at the end of the day because the people, why the, the, the reason why people, they want to buy online, it's because they want to shop for a product, not because the banner looks good, you understand? So if you, if you, if you of course the banner is important, but these are things that you could perfect with time. And this is what people need to understand. It, like it's not about creating the online store, it's about growing it. So you start, you put it, you get it there, but then you constantly, constantly maintain it and make it grow. Make sense? Yes, so launching, so launching the idea as fast as you can and you adjust and perfect the platform on the go with new ideas, um, new methods that you'd like to test out. Exactly, um, well said. So, so let's say he has, let's say for example, there's this entrepreneur, he wants to start an e-commerce business, I don't know, like a fashion brand or an accessories brand. Um, so what, how should he start off his journey? Um, is there a certain combination of rules? How should he, let's start off with the product. So what should he focus on in deciding on uh, which product he should sell? Yes. So b before I jump, I'm going to answer the question. I mean, also, with time, I've discovered, uh, like over the years, is that to really succeed online, it really takes three things. It's as simple as that. So the first point is the product, right? And then is the price. And then it's the solution or the e-commerce solution that the, uh, you need to basically start your online business. A lot of people, they do the biggest mistake is they don't have the right product or they have the right product but they don't, they, they don't have it digitized in the best possible way, right? So, so let's focus a bit on talking about the product, which is a very uh, most important thing. And I mean, before even thinking of moving online, this is what you need to think of. This is the business plan, basically, right? It's to sitting down, putting it on paper, and see if it really makes sense for, for it to make a business out of it online, right? So... For instance, if I was selling, let's say, ice cream on the street, well, it's not the same thing to sell the ice cream online, right? But if, if let's say, I'm selling in the retail, I have a fashion product, I have, let's say, accessories, this is the easiest way, right, to, to sell it online. So product, the type of product that we're selling, this could make or break it, all right? However, so, uh, so, once you know that you have a, right, a really nice product, all right, the next thing is to see that if, uh, let's say, handling and sh like shipping and handling the product also makes, um, makes sense, right? So I'm going to give you an example. Let's say I'm, I'm selling um, diapers online, you know, for some reason, okay? I don't know why I came up with that because someone just actually mentioned it a few, few hours ago. But let's say you're selling diapers online, all right? I... I mean, I will never sell diapers on an international level, right? There's a shop, a grocery shop or, or a pharmacy at every corner of a street. So it doesn't make sense to sell diapers internationally. But it makes sense, though, to sell diapers nationally or on a regional level uh, as grocery, especially in Corona time right now, right? So Corona time changed everything. So now a lot of things make sense to buy and sell online. But you need to know your business and your market. You need to know that how much would it cost in terms of logistics. Most of the time, nationally, it will make great sense to do business. But internationally, you need to understand what are the shipping costs, what are the legal implications as well on a customs level, you know, how do you handle the returns as well when you're shipping it internationally, right? So all, the, all those are, are part of the get started, I would say, business plan that you need to understand. And there's a lot of articles online. There's, uh, I mean, e -coms has invested a lot and generated a lot of good and excellent content for that. But at the same time, you could learn a lot about these things online. These are public informations. And by the time that you're thinking about it, other people are already doing it. So you could learn a lot by researching online. Exactly. So, um, so it's uh, keeping in mind the size of the market that will be buying my product is very important. So this is one of the points that we've mentioned. Um, the legalities and the, custom, and the customs that we need to keep in mind. That's another point. Um, what about the logistics in storing the product? Um, should we take this point also into consideration, the shipping part of it, how to handle it? And what are the downsides of it if we, for example, decide to sell 
um, refrigerators versus selling, for example, diapers or uh, fashion clothes? Well, again, you need to understand your market. You need to understand the audience where you're selling your product, right? So, uh, for example, uh, uh, what I've learned a lot is that there's in every country or every region, there's the culture behind it, right? You need to understand the culture. In some areas, for example, when I was in North America, I used to order my shampoo online. I used to order so many things online. We're here, for example, in the Middle East where, for, I mean, I do this less, right? Because in North America and Canada, it was very cold, for example, to go out. You know, it was so easier to order online, especially that I, I used to like ordering specific brands that they were not available, let's say, in my local pharmacy. Uh, so it really depends on that, special electronics, ordering from different websites. It makes sense. Uh, in our case right now, uh, like here in the Middle East, it changes. You know, you have to understand how accessible is the product, where is it, how long does it take to ship. Nowadays, these things are becoming very convenient. So it is actually the time to really benefit from this growing wave of e-commerce, especially lately, I mean, uh, where internationally e-commerce has been booming to a level that I have, would have never imagined it. I mean, so very important to understand your market, your audience. At the same time, where you mentioned about storage and logistics, there are a lot of solutions for that. So, for instance, if you have, if you're selling on an international level, you could actually use warehouses all across the world. I mean, there are warehouses where, for instance, you could store your product, let's say if you're selling in, the, in Saudi Arabia, for example, or in Europe or in North America, you could ship your products on pallets or in bulk and have them there. And then you could have a local logistic company, fulfillment company, basically, we call them fulfillment centers, where uh, they could do the fulfillment, the last mile delivery for you, for example. I see, cool. Um, Rudy, there's a question that we've received um, this morning, actually, on our, uh, through Instagram DMs. Um, there's this store who's, um, who's trying to decide if the product on his store should be branded, but should be branded by his, its own brand, or should it, is it okay to feature other international brands on the store? Which is the better direction? So having all the brands um, custom branded or having multiple international brands on my store? Yes, I like these kinds of questions because, I mean, there's no one answer for them, but I could give you my answer, okay? This is really my personal answer over the 20 years I've been hearing all around, right? So for me, it's as simple as more items, more sales, right? So the more I add items on my store, the more likelihood I have more sales. It's like actually also some of my uh, colleagues, they call it, I like, I like the example, they, they compare, let's say, a, a small mini market to compare to a large supermarket, right? So when you have a, a small grocery store, uh, you know, local, uh, compared to a large one, for sure the large one will have more traffic because they have more brands, more choices, uh, more prices, you know, like more variations and so on. So... Uh, I would say the, the rule is that if you have a small store, you need to understand your, your product line. So if you have, uh, let's say, I, let's say I'm a, I'm a, uh, I sell bicycles online, right? So I know that my audience would ask me uh, to have some bike accessories, some uh, uh, protection, some this. So I need to understand all the uh, products that may be complementary to my business that I could upsell and cross-sell. And if I don't have them, well, let me partner with third-party people and, you know, suppliers, and let me actually get commission on them on them, and try to drop ship them, or vice versa, I could actually stock them. Once I know that there are demands on them, I could stock them, and I, could, I know that I will uh, sooner or later sell them, right? I see. So, so try to uh, exceed the customer's expectations, always have yes. any product he would have in mind on your platform, regardless whether it's your uh, brand or not, at least in the early stages, and then see how it goes. You can test off the new brand and take it from there. Yes, but again, don't forget, don't waste too much time on that. Start, and then these are things you work on as you're progressing, right? 
You People will ask you questions over time, like your customers. Listen to your customers, right? So your customers will ask you, hey, I'm trying to buy this. Do you have it? If you don't, then you're going to need to search for these products, right? Yeah. So as you're going, you're going to grow your collections, your categories, and so on, and you're going to reach bigger markets, and you're going to become, hopefully, that success story in your, in your, in your markets. Okay, cool, cool. Um, Rudy, so let's say that we decided on um, a product. We decide that we're going to sell um, accessories, okay? Um, yes. How do I decide on the price of, of the products on my page, on my store? Yes. So, so good point. So as I had mentioned before, product pricing and then the e-commerce solution. So pricing is the second most important thing. So a lot of customers, for example, where uh, uh, I, 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 I was involved in their e-commerce journey, let's say, uh, once we launched their business, they, didn't, they couldn't sell, right? They were not selling as expected. Although they, have, they had a very nice product, right? Everything was perfect, but they couldn't sell. So my first thing that I personally do is once I launch an online business, I experiment the pricing, right? Now, there's many ways to do that, but my favorite way of doing it is this. So I launch, for sure, I create a discount, I, I actually advertise and so on, but right away after, if I'm not getting the expected traffic and sales, all right, my first doubting will be, what if my pricing is not right, okay? Now, here there's many ways, I, I mean, to think about the pricing. I mean, you could price your product based on your competitors, you could price them based on your cost price, you could price them based on the value of the item in the offline market, in the online market, on different channels, and so on. This is not the topic that I wanna uh, focus on, but, but what you need to know is what I call like the break-even price. What's the break-even price for me? The break-even price is the cost of the item, the minimum cost of the item where I am not losing money. If I sell that item, if I, like the direct cost, if I remove the direct cost from it, I'm not losing money. So this is kind of an experimentation I would do in the beginning where I'm actually trying to understand the market and trying to see what's the perfect pricing fit for the market, all right? It's experimental. So once I drop my price to a maximum, right, and I, I do my marketing campaigns, I advertise, if I see a difference, right, before and after, then I would know definitely that it was my pricing the problem. So then again, what I would do is increase my pricing gradually and even talk to my clients. By the way, I love talking to the clients. I mean, some of my, our, our clients, they know me very well already. I talk to them a lot and I love doing that because it's the best way to really understand the user and their needs, right? Because at the end, we're doing this to find a solution and a need, you know, to answer a need of the market. So this is very important. Our merchants should, like when you're starting an online journey, you need to do the same thing and question and talk to your clients. Take the phone and really randomly call your clients and, and get to know them, right? This is the best possible way to do it. I see. Um, Rudy, a question about the cost um, and setting it up. So um, I understand that we need, uh, we need to have um, a competitive pricing early on and test it uh, often to find out what fits best in the market. Um, but you mentioned that we need to, work, uh, to break even, we need to exclude the direct costs. What about the, the remaining costs? The, you know, there's monthly uh, costs that are always there. Are these calculated in the pricing of the product? Yes, of course. On a long term, of course, you're, you're doing business to make profits, right? So all these are gonna be factored in. But in the beginning, you're experimenting, right? When you launch an online business, you need to understand there's a cost, you know, cost of doing business online. A lot of people, again, they're, you know, I, I also discovered like everything is about pricing, the cost, right? Cost, cost. People are trying to reduce their cost. E-commerce is the best way to do it. But at one point, you need to know what kind of cost you need to cut, right? In this case, your goal is to experiment, is to understand. So when you're dropping the price, it's not really for profitability here. It's you're just trying to understand that is, is the pricing what's not allowing you to sell? You know, you're going by elimination kind of thing, right? So you're testing. This could be only for one day or two days, by the way. You don't need to do it on the long term. 
It's a one campaign thing. You test it. You bring a lot of traffic. If, if people are not converting after you're dropping to a price to a shockingly low price, right? Then you have a serious problem. They're, then it they could be that there's a product problem. They could be a website problem. It could be a bug on the website. You know, you need to always ask yourself. It could be the payment gateway that was, for example, not configured properly, right? So, so there's a lot of little things like that. You need to keep an eye on them. I see. So with um, e-coms, what we do, what we do usually uh, is that we once we launch a website, we keep a very close eye on a website for the next few days to make sure that. There's no human error, for example, uh, pricing errors, uh, description errors, uh, and even uh, integration errors. Yeah. Um, Rudy, a question around um, the, pr the pricing strategy. Should we, I mean, is decreasing the pricing or, or having a break-even pricing the only strategy out there to be competitive? Um, or is there something else I can work around um, my pricing, for example, um, maybe keep, for example, I have this t-shirt for 20 bucks, um, but I don't want to decrease the price. Maybe I can bundle it with something else and have like the package of both be um, a better deal for the customer, but then if he buys one item, it's, uh, it's the same price. So it's not competitive much, but buying two items is competitive. Um, so what are the different strategies? Like this one, maybe, I don't know if it works much, um, does it work much? And what other strategies do we have to put together a competitive pricing for the customer other than decreasing the price? Good question, actually. Um, of course, I mean, uh, once you start your online business and you're ready to really grow it, right? Not grow it, I mean, you're ready to launch it. Sorry about that. So once you're launching it, you're going to need to do a lot of experimentation, right? You need to understand your visitors, your audience, and so on. So very good, nice way is to create sales, deals, bundles, you know? So uh, at e-coms, we call them sales boosters. What are sales boosters? These are ways, for example, to increase your sales. Of course, here, you need to be creative, all right? So, uh, for example, uh, uh, let's say we're talking about sales boosters. You have coupons are the, one of my favorite. Actually, they are my favorites, okay? Coupons are the best way for online businesses, and e-coms has invested a lot in our coupon system. We have something very unique to our, our business model, okay, where we help create a coupon landing page where everything automatically updates itself. This is the most powerful tool. You could create, for example, uh, marketing campaigns and right away put the link there and they could click and it automatically activates the coupon. This tool... Uh, I mean, was did phenomenal sales uh, in the past when I used to use it. Uh, <clears throat> so also you have the discounts, of course. Then you have the bundles, the deals. Uh, you have upsell. You have cross-sell tools. So these are all uh, all kinds of tools that you need to start using. Um, so that's it. Like uh, I mean, you need to. It's not just also about decreasing the price. So you said something very important. We're doing the pricing test to to go by elimination, but at the same time, you need to make sure that the product title, the descriptions, the content, the images are all perfect. If the pricing is right and that's not right, then you still have a problem, right? At the same time, your goal is to reduce anxiety. So make sure that. All the messages are very clear. Uh, return policy, your shipping policy, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, make sure to have uh, your, your numbers, your coordinates, uh, have support. What I like a lot is that chat tool, you know. Uh, so offering at the end of the day the best customer experience is your key to having the entire thing uh, going in the smooth way where you are growing your business day by day, basically. I understand, I understand. So at this point, we have, um, we decide on a, pro a product. Um, we have uh, the first version of our pricing there, and we need to start building the store. So we need to decide on the e-commerce solution, as you mentioned, the third point. Um, how do we go by that? How do we start? So, so for the e-commerce solution, I mean, there's a, a, there's a few things that I've learned in the past. So first of all, there's many ways to grow your business online. Back in the days, it used to cost, let's say, two, three hundred thousand dollars It took a year and a team to build it. But nowadays, it could be launched through it by a click of a minute, like click of a button. So, so uh, creating an online store is 
very easy. And e-coms, we're doing it in a way that we're making sure that everything you need is within the platform, especially the basic stuff. Sorry, all the integrations, all the shipping, the, sh the payment stuff, the multi-currency, the multilingual, everything is built into the platform and done the best possible way that you don't need to go with third-party add-ons and plugins that could complicate things a lot. You know, regarding add-ons and plugins, I mean, these are very interesting stuff, but at one point what they do is it, need, it depends on what kind of add-ons and plugins you're using. Some of them are very nice to have built into the platform where it's not an, an extra additional, uh, let's say, uh, third-party uh, website that you need to go through. Some of them, they need to be, for example, uh, 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 let's say it could be outside. For example, shipping, you have no choice. It's an integration. Payment, you have no choice. It's an integration. Marketing tools, for example, if you want to use uh, mailing lists, you know, like, uh, for instance, uh, uh, you know, those email campaigns that you're sending, you know, there's many of them, MailChimp, SendGrid, uh, MailerLite, there's many of them. So those are very nice tools to integrate with. But if you have a coupon system, I mean, that should be built into the platform, right? So choose the right platform that has everything that you need to get going. This is the most important thing. So hosted solution are usually the best way to do it. Hosted means that everything is done and you don't need to have a technical team to do the whole uh, setup of the store and everything. And you don't need to worry about the updates, the upgrades and the maintenance and support. And also all the headaches that comes through the integrations with the third parties because the platform is self-maintained and everything is built into it. So this is mainly what I would, uh, what's the uh, reason behind e-coms is we focus on having all the rich features built into the platform. Okay, so, they, like, so we need to focus on selecting a platform that um, has all the features that allow us to build something to easily set up the store and scale it um, yes. in the future whenever we figure out the, the best formula for the pricing and so on. Um, and, it, and hosting solutions are the better option because um, they, have, they are not dependent on other elements and they are always up to date. And it's, it's easier for you to choose them as an amateur and not a techie person, so to speak. Um, exactly. Yes. So, um, so I, let's say I decided on, a, on an, on an e-commerce platform. Um, I log in, for example, I just created a store in e-coms. Um, the first page that I see is to select a template. So um, should I or should I not? Because when I, when I am visualizing my store, sometimes um, early stage entrepreneurs and e-commerce e entrepreneurs they want their store to be this specific way. Um, should they go ahead and do their dream visualization of the store or should they um, focus on using a template? Good question. Uh, based on my experience, what I've realized at the end of the day, the stores that are selling the most does not mean that they have the best design. For instance, uh, if you look at Amazon or eBay or any other large traffic website, it doesn't mean that they are the sexiest, uh, let's say, uh, designs and look and feels, right? It's, the, it's not the most appealing. It's usually what we focus on is the user experience, the overall user experience, right? Yeah. So uh, this goes with hand in hand with, with what I was trying to say in the early beginning when we started this uh, webinar is uh, focus, like try to get the website up and running as fast as possible, right? If you focus too much on the little details, it will be impossible. Whether you built it yourself, even if you build it yourself, it's not going to be fast. It's not going to be easy. And you're going to run through tons of problems. Even e-coms, we have a team of engineers not only building themes, but maintaining those themes. Those themes, it takes an army to maintain them. It's not a joke, right? The, I mean, there's features and compatibility issues. There's enhancements feedbacks from the, uh, there's like new devices coming up all the time. So you constantly need to add those features and add-ons and, and built into the theme. So that's why my biggest advice towards that is that go with a, with a, with a platform that usually offers themes built in and maintains those themes. The most important point here is maintained, meaning that if today you create a store with e-coms, for example, and 
Five days later, there's a bug. Well, automatically that bug that was discovered or an issue or compatibility thing, or it could be an enhancement, right? You will automatically benefit from it, right? So this is the most important thing is that when you go with a theme, you have an army of people supporting your business and making sure that they're t- tackling all the technical issues for you. I see. So selecting a theme is a better option because it will give me direction on what really works in the e-commerce world because when starting off, uh, I am not an expert, so I couldn't really tell if what looks beautiful to me is the right way to do business. Yes. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And, and also the themes are, as I said, they're constantly maintained. So if we, if the, let's say the business, if the product team decides, for example, to do enhancements, automatically the, the store owner you know, doesn't even need to think about it. Those enhancements are automatically applied and he's actually, like the platform is working in a way that it's helping the merchant grow his business on a technical level where the merchant's responsibility will be to grow the business on a commercial level. Like focus on the business basically and let the technical team, uh, for example, of e handle the technical part. I understand. Um, Rudy, uh, in day one, what, should, what are the minimal features that we need in our e-commerce store? Oh, good question. Uh, <clears throat> so I would say I have a few actually. Well, well, some of them are a must, all right? The, some, of them, some of them you cannot bypass. For example, the, the first integrations or, or the, the apps that you need to uh, connect to uh, once you launch your store are, for me, the Facebook Pixel app. I think this is the most important one, and especially the Google Analytics app. Those two will allow Google and Facebook, which are the main sources of traffic that for usually businesses that are starting online, because at one point they need to advertise, right? So those are the main sources. Well, they're gonna tell the Facebook platform and the Google platform behind the scenes. These are like API and these are all kinds of scripts, you know, very technical things that they will teach the Google AI and the Facebook AI about what's working and what's not working based on the traffic that's coming on your website. So it allows the Google and Facebook to monitor what's happening on the website, not only on the Facebook and the Google platform, to in order for optimizing the ads that are coming. At the same time, Google Analytics will give you a lot of good statistics that you're able to analyze about your store. Who is your audience? Where are they coming from? How many visitors are you getting? What's your conversion rate? And so on. So these are my two favorite ones to get started and you need to have them. Now, the ones that are basically, that are good to have, uh, I would go towards, um, I would say credit notes. This is one of the uh, very smart app that, uh, that helps you grow because the biggest problem, the biggest challenge, I would say, in e-commerce is handling the returns, right? And when you get returns, well, you need to kind of refund the client, and there's all that headache that comes with uh, exchanging the money and so on, right? A lot of e-commerce businesses will not refund the money back to the business, right? So here, the credit notes will allow you, for example, to create a credit note seamlessly in a very easy way on the platform level and to track it while giving the option to the user to go back on the website and exchange it, let's say, with a bigger size, a different product, and so on. So, and what's nice about the credit notes is that it, they, could, they don't have to use it immediately. They could use it, let's say, in a week or two. It's convenient for the business, and it's convenient also for the uh, client. Now, if you ask me other apps, I mean, there's the WhatsApp app that I like lately a lot because... I mean, especially with Corona time right now, uh, what's happening is that a lot of people, they're offering this, this experience uh, that is in store, but it's a one-to-one chat tool. Uh, WhatsApp is very popular, and especially right now, last week, uh, Facebook announced that uh, they're going to actually allow, uh, they're going to, uh, let's say, give more, uh, uh, more uh, functionality to WhatsApp uh, based, uh, for e-commerce, where they're going to allow people to buy product through website through uh, WhatsApp by connecting WhatsApp to the, the websites. So this is going to be seamless integration with the website where people could chat, for example, and then share a link and then click on it and check out automatically uh, on the website of their business. So this is very exciting stuff. 
And last but not least, I mean, one of my favorite ones, you know, when you're, when you're selling online, it's all about user-generated content, okay? So user-generated content is scalable. So as people are buying online, rating and reviews and product questions and reviews are very popular. Uh, it's a very nice feature. It's a very popular feature on e coms where people, once they make their purchase, they will automatically receive an email where they can rate and review the product. And at the same time, visitors, instead of creating a chat, they could ask, uh, they could post a question about a product and have the store owner reply. And then that kind of content is going to be scalable because other people will benefit from it and make, make the whole shopping experience more streamlined and automated because most of the questions are going to be answered through time. I understand. Cool. So that's it. I mean, we could go on if you want. Do you have time? <laughs> no, I think uh, this is a very interesting topic, man. Uh, yes. I think we're answering a lot of questions here. Um, there's a very interesting question that we've received uh, recently, um, also through our Instagram DMs. Um, one of our followers is considering creating an online store, Rudy, but um, he only has one product. And is it worth... Uh, uh, putting together an entire website to sell one product? This is the question. Well, it depends. If the product is an iPad at a very good price, 50% discount, you know, for sure, yes, I would say, you know. So it depends on the product. It's really, uh, of course, you have, a, you have a one product websites, you know, they're working very well. I have a few actually that I know personally, and one of them, uh, I mean, I cannot disclose the, 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 uh, the merchant, but what I could say is that is one of our top sellers and they, are, they don't have a lot of product as well, right? They just have few lines of products, one to, I would say, 10, and they could be selling as much as, for example, someone who has uh, 1,000 or 5,000 products, right? So it's not, for sure, I, I said earlier that more products means more sales, but if you have a single product website, it also makes sense. And that's why if you look at the plans, we start at a startup light plan where we allow you up to 100 items and it's basically only $5. So definitely it's worth it. It's worth it. And also something that people forget, e-commerce is not just about selling online, but it's also about exposing your business online. So even though a lot of people won't buy online, but a lot of people will know about you online and they could share those links with friends. They could actually, you might not know what's happening, but a lot of things might be uh, like going through your business. And those things are, you could measure them through the Google Analytics tools, for example, but at the same time, you will, you will know about them with time as, uh, as, your, as your business is growing and evolving through the journey. I see. So depending on the product, I mean, having a one product e-commerce store is, is a good idea. It's not, it's not a bad idea. Um, it's as just like running a regular e-commerce store. You're, there's a transaction happening on your website, so you need to treat it equally. Um, and it's a way to position the brand, as you mentioned. Um, Rudy, I'm going to jump into Q&A here. Um, the first question we received is, how do we deal with pricing giving, uh, given the currency situation in Lebanon? Oh. Uh, I mean, at this point, it's, uh, it, this is, uh, there's, there's many, like, there's many ways to under, uh, answer this question. But what I could say is that there's a trend right now, right? You need to follow the trend. You need to understand what's happening on the industry. I mean, it's unfortunate what's happening in, uh, in the country right now in Lebanon. But uh, what I would say is that you need to offer different options to the clients, right? In Lebanon, for instance, uh, a lot of clients are, are allowing to, uh, they're adding the currency, let's say Lebanese currency. They're accepting that, although they were a dollar-based uh, website. So this is the smartest thing you can do to promote that, hey, we're a local company offering lo accepting local currency. Now, again, shopping, uh, shopping online, as I told you about, is, it's all about the pricing, right? So having the right... Uh, let's say uh, the currency exchange rate is also the key element. So you could have a fixed rate and you could have variable rates, right? So currently a lot of businesses, what they're doing is they're fixing their rates. So for example, they would say $1 equals 1,500 Lebanese pounds, for, exa for example. So this is the common way that everybody's doing it. Otherwise, you, you might be able to 
have a bigger, let's say, exchange rate, but you're going to, uh, let's say, you, you have to understand what's your audience and what's the market, right? So as you're doing it, you're going to have to take feedback. If you're not selling enough, most probably that could be a, a, major, a major deal breaker for your clients. So nowadays, I mean, people are used to and are accepting that, uh, that kind of uh, uh, practice. So I would say you could announce it as well. Some of them, if you're a local business, you could announce it right away in the uh, header of your website. I see, cool. Um, Rudy, um, we're jumping over time a bit. So um, um, these are all the questions we received. Um, um, I wanna thank you for your time today. Um, the session has been amazing, some really insightful and amazing content. Thank you so much for your time. Um, for all the viewers who are watching us, everyone, we have um, an offer currently running for everyone who is planning to launch an e-commerce business um, with a 20% discount on the store setup fees and delivering the store ready for you within three business days for you to start selling online. And you will receive a three months free subscription on your e-commerce plan. To redeem wow. that offer, just uh, send us a message on Instagram and we will send you all the details required or go to ecoms.com and use the promo code on the website and you can start, um, you know, building your e-commerce store and riding the e-commerce wave, the way we like to call it. Um, from here, guys, uh, tune in more to our Instagram um, profile, to our Instagram post. We're posting a giveaway tomorrow also for you to um, build your e-commerce momentum and start your e-commerce journey. Other than that, this session will be posted on IGTV. I can send you everyone a recap. I have my notes here, and um, I hope everyone has a great week and uh, have a great weekend moving forward. Thank you, Rudy, again. And cheers, everyone. My pleasure. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Take care.